Hello, welcome back to another Origin Showcase video. In this showcase video, we're we'll going through the Thunderborn Origin created by the user known as Jag Axe. This guy submitted this Origin towards my actual Discord server itself. So, if you want to have any ideas, any Origins that you want me to make a video on in the future, whether you be the creator or not the creator themselves, make sure to submit it in my Discord server in the Origins Ideas chat. And of course, the link to my Discord server is in the description down below. Now, this Origin mod was made for version 1.16.5, but this will work in 1.17 perfectly fine. Most Origins tend to do well being upgraded to the newest version. Sometimes something may potentially break because something gets changed by the slightest degree in the, between the two different versions, but 9 times out of 10 it's perfectly fine, so feel free to use it in whichever version you want to play Origins in. You will need to make sure you have the Pinnacle mod as well as the Extra Origins mod in order to allow you to have the size changing section of the mod itself. In the description of the Origin itself, the Thunderborn is a 3 impact origin and has the maximum amount of impact upon the game. This extraordinary creature has rare power to manipulate storms to its will and uses them vigorously. And now let's get to the actual abilities. Moving on to the first ability, you've got Exhaustion. Since you're a weirder of lightning, you need to use more energy to use your powers, requiring you to eat more, although this doesn't exactly apply when you're exposed to any form of rain. And if you don't want to be more exhausted throughout the day, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, as there's over 100,000 of you guys who consistently watch my content who haven't actually subscribed yet, so I'd highly appreciate it, even if just a few of you guys would do so. So your natural hunger is sped up by a huge margin, but again, it pretty much becomes null and void and becomes absolutely normal again when you're in the rain, so it's a good bit of information to know about there, so rain's gonna be your best friend when it comes to this origin. Moving to the next ability, you've got Unwieldy. The way your hands are formed provide no way of holding a shield upright in the correct way to allow you to block. Do I need to explain how this ability works? It's pretty much present in a good majority of a lot of different types of origins. Basically, your shield don't work. Moving to your next ability, you've got Lightning Drain. Water stops you from being out to interact with your lightning abilities, causing you to exhaust faster when in it. Pretty much big rule of thumb here, do not swim in water. Do not swim in water whatsoever. Um, not only does it stop you from using your lightning abilities whatsoever, it also causes your hunger to drain extraordinarily fast. And when I say fast, it drains faster than your actual air bubbles do, meaning that you will start to starve to death before you start drowning to death, which ultimately isn't really that great. Water is going to be a very massive weakness, but instead of taking damage from being in water, you just lose your hunger like it's nobody's business. Ah, it's a different way of doing it, I guess, making it so water is still a weak place to go into, but instead of it killing you upon touching, it just burns your hunger like it's nobody's business. Moving to your next ability, you've got Unchained Storm. Now, this is binded to your save tool activator key, which is defaulted to the button C, unless you have Optifine installed. When you have Optifine installed, it will automatically unbind this button, so you're gonna have to go bind it yourself. You can summon a great storm that will strike lightning around the area surrounding you. This is ultimately a really, really cool ability. It summons a lot of lightning strikes, as well as it summons a great storm as well. It summons a lightning storm that will go on for a little bit afterwards. Now, the cooldown of the ability is many, many minutes. You can only like use this ability once every now and then because it's got such a long cooldown. And also when you use this ability in Summon a Storm, it also activates another set of passive abilities that will go over soon. Anyhow, moving to the next ability, you've got Lightning Dash. This is your primary ability. You throw a bolt of lightning which sends you to the location of where it lands. This is practically just a teleportation effect which is instantaneous. You look in a certain direction then you instantly teleport to said direction. All that this does adds to that formula. It has a beautiful effect every time you do TP. For example, you have fire landing on the ground wherever you spawn to, as well as lightning strike, as well as thunder, and all the other beautiful lightning effects when you go and teleport. This only can go roughly around 50-ish blocks from where you currently are. At a certain point, it'll give you another weirder noise in order to indicate that, hey, you just wasted your ability because you can't actually go that far in the teleportation. Anyhow, moving into your next ability, you've got lightning and vulnerability. You cannot be affected by lightning, which is why they have the lightning effect that strikes on you when you use your primary ability. It's kind of just like this one has to be their hand in hand if you want to take advantage of some of the cooler effects that you can do with a lightning based origin. Moving to your next ability, you've got Tailwind. You're a little bit quicker on foot than most others are, meaning you have a slight bit of a speed boost with this origin. It's not exactly too drastic of a one, nor is it an, an actual speed effect on top of you. It's just a nice little tiny bit of a boost that can might be or might not be useful to you. Moving to your next ability, you've got Aura of Lightning. You contain so much energy that electricity comes off, dealing any damage to anyone that dare to touches you. Yes, this is basically just some max level thorns on you at all times. You don't need to put any form of thorns on your armor whatsoever, as it pretty much gives you the maximum thorns effect that you can get in normal Minecraft, unless you have other form of mods that change the limits. But yeah, you, you kind of get out. It's, it's a bit of thorns damage that will be done to people who hit you regardless of anything. It doesn't seem to take effect to the people who hit you with, let's say, ranged weapons with like a skeleton wood, but any mobs like the husk or the zombie hitting you at point blank range do take effect.
take damage back. Anyhow, moving to your next ability, you've got the ability known as Flight. It's your secondary ability, calling upon the wind lifts you up into the air, letting you float around at a slow pace. This is basically just a levitation effect that you have more control over. You can stop it from going indefinitely up. You can actually just hover in place for a few moments. You move forward, you can go upwards, you can't go downwards exactly. A big word of warning though, if you do deactivate your secondary ability while you're in the middle of the air, you will take fall damage. You still take fall damage to this origin, so you do want to be really careful when using your secondary ability. Because if you accidentally deactivate this ability whilst you're in midair, you might potentially be high enough in order for you to kill yourself because you're a goddamn idiot and deactivate your ability while in the middle of the air. Moving into your next ability, you've got Energy Sense. In order to activate this ability, you just need to be holding your sneak button, which is usually bind to shift, but most people tend to move it a lot, some people don't. You can sense the energy fields around the creatures near you while concentrating and alerting you to their locations. Practically, this just gives everything around you the glowing effect whenever you're holding down the sneak button, but only when you're holding down the sneak button, but it will always be on when you're holding down the sneak button. The moment you're no longer holding down the sneak button, nothing around you will be glowing anymore, as well, you're no longer holding down the sneak button, and it's pretty instantaneous. You can flick it on and off with a, by just hitting the button on and off over and over again. You can easily just flick through it pretty quickly. Anyhow, moving into the next ability, you've got the Death Tornado. Your power is released when you die, throwing everything around you into the air. Now, when going into this, I had no idea what exactly this was meaning, but from knowledge now, it means that pretty much whenever you die, any one around you will be flung way up into the air. None of your items will be flung anywhere further than normal, but mobs around you will. They get flung up high enough that they'll probably die from fall damage, but it's not always guaranteed, so ultimately, this ability is pretty cool and pretty nifty, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's there. Moving into your next ability, you've got fresh air. You need to sleep high to get used to being in a high altitude. I mean, this ability is pretty simple. You just need to sleep like pretty high up off of the ground, like around 60, 70 blocks up in the air before you can actually sleep. And that's pretty normal for a lot of origins at this point. Another little nifty thing is that it actually gives you a tooltip when you try to use a bed in the wrong conditions. It tells you, hey, minimum of Y, 80. Moving into your next ability, you've got restricted air. Being restricted to tight spaces slows your body down. This pretty much just means you'll gain a slowness debuff whenever you're in very close spaces around like two blocks blocks above you, you have blocks around you on the side and all sides around you. Bridge when it's like a tight airspace where it's like, eh, you don't, it's like claustrophobic type thing. Moving into your next ability, you've got the In Your Element ability. When you summon a storm, you'll grow into a larger size and gain some cool buffs, which you, of course, need Pinnacle and the extra Origins mod to actually function this part here. By default, you're two blocks tall, but when this mode, you'll be granted to four blocks tall. These are like the bonuses that you get when you use your ability that creates a lot of lightning around you and causes a storm to appear and all that. These are the buffs that I was talking about a little bit earlier. You also get speed, strength, regeneration, and jump boost as well. But of course, your floor block's tall, so that's both a really good thing and a really bad thing at the same time, because you need to be able to fit through a two by four block space in order to actually get through things, so it's a bit more of a pain in the ass to deal with kind of thing, but pretty good boss nevertheless. It's not jump boost, sorry, it's resistance, and they both last, they all last a minute of length until the ability runs out, and then you shrink back to your normal size. But don't worry, if this ability runs out, you've also got this secondary passive effect here called Aura of Lightning. In rain, you gain strength and speed, so pretty much you'll lose your resistance and regeneration as well as your size boost after a minute, but after that minute, you'll also still keep your strength and speed until the rain stops. Pretty useful combo since you can still use your speed and strength when you're back to your normal size. Moving to your next ability, you've got Prone to Projectiles. You're vulnerable to arrows and tridents, meaning they do a bit of extra damage towards you, and I'm 90% sure that these also don't proc the Thorns ability that you also have, so just be very wary with skeletons and also pillagers and trident zombies in the ocean. Trident drowns. I don't know why I said trident zombies. Don't worry about it. But just be wary of anything that shoots projectiles because they do hurt a lot more than normal. Moving into your next ability, you've got fire immunity. You cannot be set on fire as the wind surrounding you puts it out. This is again is one of those granted things that you probably should expect to come with this type of origin, especially considering that you get lightning struck upon you with your primary ability and fire tends to be set on the ground when this ability does come into effect. So it's obviously just a pretty useful thing to have the fire immunity otherwise it makes one of your abilities entirely useless because you can still get hurt by the lightning strike. Probably something of beauty with this is the actual guys managed to make it so that you don't even get the fire effects on your texture at all. You just don't get set on fire regardless of anything, even if you don't take damage. Because a lot of other origins still have the fire flames come up on your body, so you still have to deal with them on your screen. But this guy here managed to make it so that doesn't occur, so I'd give props to that guy massively for that bit. Anyhow, as always, let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this origin. Do you think it's overpowered, underpowered? Do you think it's balanced? you think there's some things problematic with it? What are your ideas and what do you think of this origin here? Either way, as always, I want to give a massive thank you to all my channel members, 85 of you guys, and I highly, highly appreciate all of your support, as well as a special thanks to my $25 channel members, Hollow the Void,
Void and Sad, and my 10 dollar channel member, Decept. And until next time, guys, goodbye.